So, so again, good morning. And um, I appreciate the, the chance to be meditating here with you on this Sunday morning. And some of you have been doing these morning sittings Monday through Friday and appreciate that you came back for this special Sunday morning sitting that is partly being done to support an online retreat that started yesterday. And it's a, I appreciate that there are so many people who are interested in meditation, about the practice, mindfulness, and that even in this time when we're so separated, we don't, we don't come together physically, we are together in heart, we are together in purpose, we are together um, in spirit of practice. So thank you. What I'd like to talk about a little bit today is um, a background or overview of the topic of the five faculties. Uh, tomorrow and for the next the coming week, I'm going to talk about the fifth of the five faculties, that of wisdom. And the first four are usually translated as faith, as effort, mindfulness, and concentration. And, um, and wisdom is a, you know, is a lofty topic in many ways. But the way that wisdom operates in Buddhism, it, wisdom arises out of the practice. It arises out of the body. It arises out of the support of the other faculties. So as, as our faith, our confidence becomes brings us into the present moment, as our capacity for engagement brings us into the present moment here with this body, as mindfulness begins to awaken our capacity for attention, not just as a cognitive ability, but awareness that is also grounded in the body. And as we develop a capacity for the focus that concentration is, we awaken much more than focus because samadhi, concentration, is also a very much an embodied experience of wholeness, of unification. So the five faculties, they're called faculties because they are faculties or capacities that we all have. We all have the capacity to have faith or confidence. We all have the capacity for effort, to all have capacity for uh, attention, awareness, for focus, and for wisdom. And uh, as we begin bringing to uh, strengthening the first four, it's almost as if it's natural for wisdom to surface. Uh, it's you don't have to go and read the books of Buddhism for Buddhist wisdom. If you want to become wise in Buddhism, you want to read the book in your own heart, the book here in your own body. This is where wisdom is born. And so to have the ability to come back in a clear way, an open way, a dedicated way, maybe even a deep embodied way into our experience of the moment so that our natural faculty, our natural capacity for wisdom can operate. And this idea that it, these are capacities, and even wisdom is a capacity that we all inherently have, that we can kind of clarify or make strong or bring, let it really work in its natural way, uh, speaks to the idea that uh, we don't have to be the one who is, the, is engineering our life or our practice. We're not the one who has to uh, figure it out or make something happen or avoid something. We create the conditions that allows this natural capacity to arise. And one of those conditions is a deep trust that there is a wisdom that arises out of the whole psychophysical system, arises out of the body. And a lot of the reason we practice mindfulness 
is not only to be mindfully present and see what's going on, but also in a certain way to get out of our own way, to allow this capacity to support us rather than being up in the control tower figuring it out and planning and analyzing and am I there yet or is, you know, have, is this the right form of experience? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Um, to be very, to learn to kind of soften and relax the control tower of self, of me, myself, and mine, and that's all up to me, and I have to, and I'm the victim, or it's, I'm having a hard time, or I have to do it, or look how great I am, to soften and relax this part of the whole psychophysical system. And that process begins, it's classically in Buddhism, with the first faculty. And it's often translated into English as faith. And uh, I like sometimes the word trust. Um, the kind of nice middle way is confidence. That we have some confidence in our ability to be present. Confidence in the value of waking up to our experience here. The confidence in a path of practice that as we practice mindfulness and concentration, it keeps opening up this the Dharma book that's in ourselves. It's a safe, it can be, it becomes a safe place. It becomes a very supportive place to be here in the present moment, to find ourselves grounded here. It's a process to get there. It's not easy. And that's why faith is somehow important. Some people re- react to the word, English word faith it can be uh, imply some idea that you have to have faith in some doctrine that you can't believe in and something you don't know. Um, the idea you have to believe something. Uh, I love the fact that the word believe in its original usage in, uh, uh, in the old days, long time ago, a thousand years ago or something, uh, meant um, uh, to love, to love something, to hold something dear. It didn't mean to believe a tenant or a belief, like a cognitive thing. Uh, it meant where you, where you put your heart in, what you, be, what you loved. And so this idea of, of faith, this capacity for love or care or kindness or, or you know, here's what I love. I love myself. I love to wake up. I love to be able to bring compassion and care to whatever is happening here. I love the support of uh, the refuges, Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. The fact that I'm not doing this alone. We're supported by so much. So to uh, allow faith to somehow be here to support us. And you know it's supporting you if you begin to rest or settle into this body. To make effort. And it's a, this effort, this capacity for effort is a little bit different than what it is for many people where effort, for some people when they hear it, you have to make effort, you get tight and you have to, it's like work and it's going to be exhausting. Uh, one of the paradoxes of, um, that this can be kind of explained is we make a lot of effort to relax. So if the focus is to relax, then you can't strain or push or get tight or work a lot to relax. But we're diligent, we're persistent in staying here, relaxing into the body. And relaxing into the body doesn't mean becoming too limp. It means softening and relaxing the attention. So the attention, so we rest in our body as our body, you know, keeps us upright perhaps or and so this effort to come back and the effort is a relaxing effort, a softening effort as long as we don't fall asleep. Uh, if uh, we are too tired or too dull, then that effort is good to kind of recognize or wake up the alertness of attention as well. And this balance of alertness and relaxation. But without some bringing ourselves to the cushion, the effort to bring ourselves to the cushion, the effort to begin again, begin again if the mind wanders off, um, you know, there's no practice. And the art of that effort is how to make that effort something that you enjoy, something that's nice and supportive, that you look forward to the effort. Every time your mind wanders off, you come back in such a kind way, such a supportive way, or such a ease, easeful way, that the very way that you come back is you, you can't believe your good luck. 
that you get to come back. As opposed to, oh no, I wandered off in thought. Oh no, terrible me, I'm not doing it right. And then it doesn't even feel good to come back. I've done this where I jerk my mind back, I pounce my mind back, and it doesn't really feel good. And then mindfulness, to, um, to be present for the experience, to trust our capacity to be aware, an awareness which was very, very simple. If it's not simple, it's not aware. And then samadhi, concentration faculty, uh, uh, I'd like to just say it very simply, something about it today, is that um, samadhi can be, under, can be maybe understood as a unification process. Um, bringing everything together, gathering together all our capacities to be settled here on our body, on our breathing, on whatever the attention is going to. And one way to come to that kind of uh, unification is the mantra, uh, this too. And this works very well for mindfulness too, also. And that is this too we have to include in the awareness. This too is included. Not included so we think about it, but this too is included in the kind of silent or quiet attention of mindfulness. This too, in this gathering together. And to have all these capacities beginning to settle over the days and over the weeks of practice, even the years of practice, that allows something very deep to begin uh, um, uh, uh, capacity for for. Uh, wisdom, for discernment, for understanding, for insight to begin happening. But not something that we're so responsible for, but something more that reveals itself to us. Because all the conditions are in place for the mind's capacity for wisdom to operate. And that'll be the topic, the wisdom faculty, uh, for these next few days and I look forward to uh, sharing uh, what I have learned about these topics and, and, and practice them together with you. So thank you very much for now and um, I look forward, very much forward to our next time together. Thank you.